Good morning, friends. I am here with Madison from Oliver Nature Park, uh, and we are bringing you more of our Mansfield Parks online videos. Uh, we're bringing all the best that the parks have to offer right to you guys, so that uh, even while you can't enjoy our programs, you can still learn a lot and get to enjoy some of the great things that we have at the parks and the great things that we teach until we can all be together again in the parks. So Madison is gonna talk to us today about mammals. Mm -hmm. Mammals is kind of a big word, depending on what grade you're in. You might have heard mammals, you might have not. But basically, all animals are broken down into different categories, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. So what are those categories? So those categories, well, there's a lot. But for the most part, um, a lot of the ones that we learn in school are things such as mammals, reptiles, birds, insects, amphibians, um, and things of that nature. Okay, so how you, how they, the scientists decide what category uh, an animal goes into uh, depends on a lot on a lot of different things about how they live and and how um, how they eat or how their body is made mm -hmm. or something like that. So how do you know if something is a mammal? So um, in order to be able to classify something as a mammal, um, we'll have three rules for you guys to to remember. So the first one is that it must have fur. Okay or hair or any other sort of um, thing of that nature. Um, the second one is that it um, has a live birth, so it doesn't lay an egg unless you're a platypus, but that's, it gets, compl <laughs> it gets complicated there. Uh, and the third one is that it drinks from its mom's milk. Okay, well that sounds a lot like people. Yeah, because people are mammals. Well, there you go. You guys are mammals. Congratulations. <laughs> You're a mammal. Uh, but snakes would not be mammals, right? Because snakes lay eggs and they don't have fur, mm -hmm. right? Well, some, all snakes um, lay eggs. Some of them give live, or, oh, sorry. Some of them lay eggs. Some of them give live birth. Um, but for the most part, the other rules, such as yeah, they, um, don't, have they don't have fur. Yeah, so um, you have to meet all those criteria. Mm -hmm. Very good. They're not warm-blooded. They are cold-blooded, so mm, they have to go yeah. lie in the sun. Very nice. Okay, all sorts of fun things to learn. So uh, so now that we know we're talking all about just mammals, we're going to talk about different things we can learn about mammals, depending on what type of mammal they are. Um, and just by looking at, even just looking at their bones, we have lots of skeletons and bones here. Uh, you can learn a lot about how a mammal lives and eats um, and different adaptations that they've made. So let's get right to it. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so first we're going to start with... Um, Sort of our miscellaneous group because the other ones I've sort of um, categorized um, by certain characteristics such as the scientists would. So for this one, we're going to talk about something called an omnivore. Ooh, omnivore. That's a really fancy word and that means that it's going to eat plants and animals or plants and meat. Um, right. And so that's sort of like what we are, unless yeah. you are a vegetarian. Um, you're going to be eating a wide variety of different things. Because you eat a salad and a hamburger, mm -hmm, yeah. right? So you're an omnivore. That's your oh, word yeah. of the day, guys. Omnivore. Oh, yeah. And so the first one I'm going to show you guys is this school right here. Ooh. And I'm going to let y'all at home kind of guess, although if you don't know a lot about animals, it's going to be really hard to guess the skull. So for the older kids, I'll give you a few seconds to try and guess what this is, and then I'll give you some okay, hints. Turn it straight up like that, so they can, like, they can hold it by the sides. See that? Yeah, and like turn it all the way standing up, like he's looking down. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That is a very interesting looking skull. All right, so a couple hints for you guys. Is this guy, here are his teeth. Ooh, look at that. He kind of has little buck teeth there. Let's see if we put a this little... This guy likes to wear... Yeah, chomp, just chomp, like chomp, that. Chomp, 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 chomp. This guy <laughs> likes to wear a mask. Not really, but he kind of looks like he's wearing a mask. Kind of has a point... A little nose that kind of points down like that. Mm -hmm. He's got some little teeth that kind of stick up on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. And this guy um, likes to eat out of y'all's trash cans a lot of the time. Uh-oh. We like to give them a nickname called Trash Panda. Oh, man. <laughs> so can anybody guess which animal that is? Um, well, my dog eats out of the trash, but <laughs> but his head doesn't quite look like that. Big poofy tail with stripes, and Ooh, he's great. Stripes and a little mask. Mm -hmm. mm, what does that sound like? A raccoon. Okay. If you guys guess that, then good job. If you if not, it's okay. All right. Work. So look at the skull again. There, does it? Can you see that looks like a raccoon? Oh, there's the underneath of him. Very good. You can even see his teeth. He kind of looks like human teeth. If you see. Mm -hmm. there. And so these guys eat a wide variety of things. Of course, they are omnivores. 
I'm trying to find a picture for you guys to check out. So these guys are omnivores and they're gonna eat things like meat, berries, um, foraging for bugs. So they sort of eat everything. Gross. So of course we see these guys around yeah, a lot. And there's another big picture of their skull. Absolutely. Yeah, so these guys are really cool. I like them. Uh, some people don't. And and the next one that we're going to talk about um, is another one that I like and a lot of people don't. But, uh -oh. um, I The biggest thing about our native wildlife is finding respect for them um, and, you know, learn to coexist with them because they might live in your backyard. Yeah. And eat your trash. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Okay. So this guy is another omnivore. A little different. Ooh, his head is smaller. His head is a little A lot pointier. Smaller. A lot pointier. So the difference is this guy's snout is a little bit more broad and this guy's mm -hmm. snout is a lot more long. Mm -hmm. He does have those sharp teeth. teeth on the front there. He's yeah. got pointy teeth, but he's also got kind of flat molars. And those molars are your back teeth. And those molars in humans help us to grind down plants. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here. So you have the sharp ones in the front to bite the meat and then the flat ones in the back to bite the, or to chew the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So this guy also has uh, those back teeth too. And these guys, um, they also are out at night and sometimes you'll see a mommy one uh, carrying a bunch of its babies on its back. Um, they also are depicted um, having their tail. They have like this really long pink tail and they use it to curl up and sort of hang upside down in trees. Oh, upside down in trees. Can you guys think of what animal that would be that hangs upside down in trees and at night? And they're very, very poofy. And they have big pink noses and oh they're my so goodness. cute. What is it? It is an opossum. Ooh. So why is it sometimes an opossum and sometimes just a possum? So um, possum is a nickname that we like to use. Okay. But scientists have um, differentiated the opossum and the possum. And the possums are uh, marsupials that live in um, Australia, and we'll talk about that word in a second. And the opossum are marsupials that live in North and South America. So if you see one in your backyard, it's an opossum. It's an opossum, but you can okay. call it possum. But um, usually we try to call it by its real name just Absolutely. so that we don't confuse people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so these guys are marsupials, and marsupials are um, big in Australia. And so a marsupial is a mammal that has its babies really, really early on, and then its baby's like so tiny, and it climbs up its mama's stomach and goes into a pouch. Oh, like a Can kangaroo. You, yeah, like a kangaroo. Okay. And a wallaby and all sorts of other animals in Australia um, are, are marsupials. And so um, the opossum is very special to us because it's North America's only marsupial. Interesting. Very special to us. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So this next skull, super funky. It's tiny. Look at those. Look at those teeth. I don't know if you can tell, but their teeth are just bumps. So it hasn't adapted to be able to bite into things or um, grind things. It's just sort of bumps. Its nose kind of looks like a duck. Yeah, it's really pointy. It doesn't really look like a mammal. Mm -hmm. And of course, it does have eye sockets, but the eye sockets were very fragile and must have broken off. So you can't see the eyes sort of like you would in the other skulls. Now these guys have an adaptation. That's another word that we're gonna talk about. An adaptation is something that an animal uses to survive. And their bodies have adjusted to how they live. And so these guys have an adaptation of a really like hard skin. They still have hair, but it's basically like a shell. And these guys roll up in the ball, sort of like roly polies, and um, you often see them on the side of the highway, digging, digging, digging. And these guys eat grubs and larvae and other worms and bugs and sort of all that stuff. So these guys, if anybody can guess from my hints. Is it maybe a special Texas animal? Yes. Ooh. Yes, we love these guys in Texas because they're really special to us. And these guys are an armadillo. Nice. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, those guys eat, eat mostly bugs. Um, they have very hard skin that they use to protect themselves because they have a really soft belly. Looks kind of like a shell, like mm -hmm. a little armor. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
yeah so we we love those guys and those guys are really cool they can uh they normally when they have their babies all of their babies are identical so it would be like if he all of your brother and sisters were the exact same as you like if they look the exact same so that's sort of like how it is to be an armadillo how funny you're yeah. always twins yeah, yeah even if you're born later you're still twins right yeah <laughs> how funny we have a really big one and the the screen can really get this yeah. one the camera that's a big guy picks that up so that is a big guy look at his teeth his teeth look just like human teeth it looks like an adult's teeth. If you oh, ask your yeah. mom or dad to see their teeth, that looks just like the side of their teeth. He needs mm -hmm. to brush his teeth, I think. I think so, too. And it's that's a really good point that you made because um, these guys are actually um, have similar body parts to us. So they're actually used um, in a science sometimes to uh, like grow skin for people that have burns. Um, and things like that. But these guys are actually not from here. All the other animals that we're gonna talk about today are from Texas. These guys are what we call an invasive species. Mm. And this is the- little, This little horns he's got coming mm -hmm. out of here. Yeah. I do not want him invading me. Oh no, and these guys forage around for grubs and such just like um, armadillos do. But they're also omnivores. See, they've, they've got uh, some sharp canines that you but can't really see. This is the little armadillo. Yeah. That guy's getting a lot bigger grubs than this little oh, guy. Oh, yeah. This little guy is like, hello. Yeah. Hello. This guy will also eat meat, though. And yeah. Oh, oh, better right the armadillo. Right oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. These guys. So, I'll give you a hint um, for you little ones. So, this guy goes, goes oink, oink. And um, he's got a curly tail and pointy ears. Oh, I bet you guys can guess what that and is. And it has little hooves. It's a pig. And this is what we call a feral hog. So feral yeah. means that it um, came somewhere that it wasn't from. Or for example, like a feral cat. It used to be uh, owned by people and then it ran off into the forest somewhere. And So then, it's like a wild animal. Yeah, it's like a wild animal that's um, ancestors or its parents were um, domesticated animals. So uh, these guys cause a lot of destruction in Texas, mm -hmm. but they're also um, really cool to show the skull off because you can just show off those different sorts of teeth and talk about how they're omnivores, just like us. Yeah. Nice. And I, actually, I forgot to show you guys, but this fur, that's raccoon fur. Because we know the mammals have fur, so mm -hmm. being a mammal has fur. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, I've never felt a yeah. raccoon before. Good. And our last little um, guy that we have here, this is not a full skull, right? No. There's no, no I, I don't see its nose no. or its mouth or anything like that, but I do see the top of its head and I do see some of its eye sockets. And so this guy, Y'all probably will be able to guess this really easily, but they're herbivores. And herbivores don't eat meat like an omnivore. These guys only eat plants. Okay. Like herbs, like if your mom or dad use herbs when they're cooking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the little green things like that they use as seasoning. So an herb uh, just means plants. So an yeah. herbivore is something that just eats plants. The omnivore eats plants and yeah. meat. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. And the meat can include um, bugs, so the armadillo. Yeah. That's considered meat. So this guy, let's think, he has hooves and he runs around. And we might know one as maybe named Bambi oh. from Disney. Oh. And they use these antlers to fight, the males do. So do the females have antlers? The females do not have antlers. Because they don't fight? Yes, the, mm. this, this type of um, deer the females do not have antlers. So if you see a guy with the antlers, you know it's going to be a boy. Interesting. So if you haven't guessed already, you'll probably be able to figure out that this is a deer. And more specifically, this is a white-tailed deer. Oh, I wish we had his tail. Mm -hmm. Well, I wish we had the whole deer. I don't really want just the tail. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and push this over. And we're going to talk about our next group of animals. Of, of mammals, specifically. 
So we talked a little bit about, Madison was saying about adaptation. So an adaptation means any time that the animal has changed something about itself. So maybe it's their fur or the outside of their body, or maybe it's how they live or what, how their teeth are, um, so that they can protect themselves and survive longer. So like when we talked about the armadillo with his hard shell on the outside, that's his adaptation because he can curl up and get really safe. And um, sometimes when we talked about like, or we look at the raccoon fur, how it's all brown, and that's because it's the colors that um, that would be out in the forest where it would be living. So it's protecting it by keeping it kind of camouflaged mm -hmm. and safe and things like that. Or like the uh, horns of the deer, so they have those so that they can fight each other and um, and stay safe and protect their their own herd. So mm -hmm. a lot of these things that we're looking at here are special adaptations of an animal. So that that's another good word for today. We've already got omnivore. Herbivore, herbivore, herbivore and adaptation. adaptations, marsupial, Man. male. Lots of different words. Lots of about. lots of big important oh, words. Yeah. Yes, but but all sorts of really really interesting things to yeah. Uh, to do. Yeah. Yeah, because all these animals are just so cool and unique because they've they've changed to you know have a certain kind of diet, which is like an herbivore. Their teeth have changed. Um, their fur has changed. It's super cool. So the next guys that we're going to talk about is another word for you guys. It is carnivore. Ooh, carnivore. So it so, sounds like omnivore, sounds like herbivore. Okay, so the omnivore eats meat and plants. Mm -hmm. The herbivore eats just plants. So what do you guys think carnivore means? What does it mean, Madison? It means they eat meat and only meat. meat. Okay. Mm -hmm. No salads. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. carnivores... Um, have a little bit of berries and such to, to supplement their diet. Dessert. Yeah, mm -hmm. they like dessert. Um, but for the most part, these guys are going to be eating mostly meat. And so um, I'm going to talk about two different sort of families of carnivores because we have families in the animal kingdom. We have cats and dogs. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I know. Of course. I have, I have cats and dogs in my family. Yes. So there's the age, the age old rivalry of cats and dogs. Oh, mine love each other. Yeah, yeah, my do too. My do too. So, the first guys that we're going to talk about, I'm going to show you guys this skull and we're going to play the guessing game again. So, this one's pretty big. I hope that's not a cat. That oh, would no. be a really big cat. Yeah. Can you imagine the ball of string that that cat would play with? <laughs> that would not be But. Bad. If I show you what it looks like to my hand, you can kind of tell what size it is. This is sort mm -hmm. of the size of my dog's skull, or my dog, my dog's head. Mm -hmm. And um, we're gonna talk about a specific uh, type of dog, uh, a canine that is um, from Texas and lives here. Um, it's a wild animal and he has pointy ears and lots of fluffy fur. Ooh. He eats meat. Look at those teeth. Yeah, all of his teeth are really sharp. You can mm -hmm. see even the ones in the back. Remember we talked about the molars on the omnivores, that them having the really flat molars to eat the um, vegetables but since um, and the plants. But since this guy is just a carnivore, all of his teeth are super sharp. And look in the front, he's got those really sharp ones because he's obviously eating some really sharp meat. Yeah, so those are basically, since um, obviously dogs don't have hands to be able to to hold things um so these are basically their knives mm. Mm -hmm. so this guy if you haven't been able to guess already based on our hints this is actually a coyote Ooh, mm -hmm. nice yes a coyote is a wild dog i actually have a picture of one here if you've never been able to see one before because a lot of our mammal friends don't like to be seen, so they come out mostly at night. There's a coyote. And, and coyotes a... can get pretty big, right? Yeah, they can get pretty big. Um, I have um, German Shepherds, and um, coyotes can get almost about that size. Wow. Mm -hmm. So a really big dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Not quite as big as wolves, and we don't have any wolves in Texas anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, they can get pretty big. And they get, they're really fluffy, so a lot of that is like just completely fluff. Right. Mm -hmm. So our next animal Ooh. is a fox. And I just told y'all what it was. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Yeah. We don't have to play the game. You can anymore. tell he's got the, the pointier nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He kind of looks like the dog, like a smaller version of the coyote. Mm -hmm. 
but there's some differences there and he's got those really sharp teeth too yeah still definitely looks more like a dog like if mm -hmm. you guys think about a dog's nose how it sticks out whereas a cat nose is usually a little bit flatter um so the it definitely looks more like like the dog with the pulled out nose like that there. oh yeah and with these guys these guys have um claws or they have paws with claws that don't um go back in because of course you guys all have dogs at home and you know what your dog's paws look like mm -hmm. um they've got claws and their claws don't go in like a cat right. the cats do the cats go when yeah the cats there. can go in yes. and out um and so these guys are actually really interesting because those claws help them to climb trees these are the only canine that can climb trees to get away from uh, bigger animals. Like a, like, a, like a coyote might chase a fox. Right. And I was going to show you guys this picture. This isn't a, a red fox, but this is a gray fox. So this one you may not be as familiar with, but they're so cute. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. Look at them. And can climb a tree. That's pretty cool. Yes. My dogs can't climb trees. Those are, guys are pretty cool, and they kind of look like a mix between a dog and a cat. They're mm -hmm. more more closely related to cats, or dogs, sorry. <laughs> They're more closely related to dogs. Very nice. Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about cats. Yay. And of course, that means you might have an idea on what cat, sort of cats we have in Texas. There, th I'll give you a hint. This isn't a pet cat for sure. Your pet cat skull. That would be a really big cat. Yeah. Yes, but you can definitely tell if you see if you turn it to the side how the the nose on the the cat. See how it's just sort of sloped, whereas like this little guy here, you see how it's long it and sticks long. out. This is definitely a dog, and that is definitely. Because, and if you guys are cuddling with your kitty cats at home, take a look at its head. Look at the side of its head. They don't really have a really long head, do they? No. They don't. It's kind of like an egg shape. Mm hmm Ah. These guys have still big teeth. Really, really, look really, at those really, sharp really, teeth. really pointy teeth. Yeah. So it's not a house cat. What kind of cat is this? This is um, one of Texas's native species of cat called a bobcat. Okay, we've seen those. Like sometimes they're out on the trails. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're out on the trails. They're really big and really fluffy again, a lot of fluffiness. Um, but these guys don't have tails. They have little bobtails. Oh. And that's how they get their name. So cute, kind of like a bunny. Mm -hmm. But exactly. not as, uh, you know, friendly as a bunny. Yes. Of course, if you see one on the trail, they're more likely to run away. Right. Um, but so you don't ever want to approach it. If you see one out on the trail, if you're walking or if you're in Oliver Nature Park and you get to see one, you're very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is be very still. You can watch it. You can even take a picture, but don't come any closer to it. You don't want to yell or scare it. Uh, you can just stay there and watch it and wait for it to go away, or you can just keep walking and walk by. They're not going to attack you. They're not going to come after you. Right. Um, they're, you're walking through their house, so it's kind of like if you were sitting on your couch watching TV <laughs> and somebody just started walking through your living room, yeah. you would be like, what the heck? Uh, and then you would probably go run and get your mom. So right. that's pretty much what a bobcat's going to do. It's going to be like, ah. Oh, not supposed to be people here and then it's go, gonna go run and find its friends mm -hmm. to hide because it doesn't know if you're there to hunt it or if you've got some sort of sharp claws and you're a predator uh, so it's more scared of you because even if it's big okay. and scary looking and it has those crazy teeth uh, we're still bigger mm -hmm. and we're still scarier to a bobcat so it's nothing to worry about you just keep moving and they'll keep moving and oh yeah hang out. and for all of our, our mammal friends you don't want to feed them either you don't want to you know leave food out for them because they might come back and become uh, they might not have that fear of right. humans anymore. They might start saying, oh, this person's going to feed me stuff. Um, and then you never know what might happen. So it's always a good idea to just let them hunt on their own. Yes. And you don't know what might make them sick. Like right. dogs, you can't give dogs like regular table food because there's mm. certain things dogs can't have and your yeah. pets and stuff like that. So same thing with pets in the wild, even more so. And since these guys are also really uh, hard to find, there's a picture of one. See, he's got those really, really fluffy sides. Um, on his head, on his face. He kind of looks like a wildcat. Oh yeah, he is a wildcat. Oh. Oh, Our yeah. school's mascot is a wildcat, so he looks like a wildcat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if your school's a, a wildcat, then Very a bobcat's cool. one. Yeah. And then we have some fur. Nice. So he's kind of got spotted fur, which again, if you look at it in the picture, uh, yeah, it's very soft. It feels just like a cat, oh, but yeah. like in the picture, you can see all the leaves and things like that that are around it. So those spots help it blend in better with the surroundings that mm -hmm. it's in. Oh, Another yeah. adaptation. There you go. <laughs> and of course, these guys have 
uh, claws that can go in their paw and go out. Yeah. So, so whenever you see their, their tracks on the ground, the, the dog tracks are going to have claws and the cat tracks aren't going to have claws because they can put those things back in. Nice. So if you see a paw print track outside when you're walking, uh, you can look and see if it has a claw on it, then it was some kind of dog. Mm -hmm. um, and if it doesn't have a claw, then it it's was a cat. A cat. some kind of cat, bobcat, oh, bobcat, yeah. or kitty cat down the street. Any kind of cat, right? <laughs> All right, so our last group of animals is another way um, that scientists classify animals based on their adaptations. And uh, these guys are uh, rodents. Ooh, so rodents are still mammals. Yes, rodents are still mammals. And rodents are special because they have teeth that never stop growing. Gross. Yeah, and those teeth also have um, mineral like iron in them and it turns their teeth uh, orange, but that's actually a good thing. If a human had orange teeth, you might want to go to the dentist. Yes. But if a rodent had white teeth, that would mean that it uh, wasn't getting enough uh, nutrients in its, in its uh, meals. Hmm. So that's something interesting, and their roots go all the way back, and so um, if this was a real skull, I would be able to pull out its teeth and its roots go all the way back there. So are they like, uh, like how kids lose a, a baby tooth and then a new one grows in? Do they fall out like that or do they just keep getting longer and longer? They'll just break off. Yeah, they'll, they'll break off, but they- Like will, fingernails. Yeah, they'll keep getting longer So they're like your fingernails, that they keep getting longer and then if you trim them or if they break, then they get shorter, but then mm -hmm. it's just gonna keep growing and growing from there. Yeah, and so um, with your fingernails, you will, uh, you know, file them down. Um, but the way that rodents file them down is, well, I'll just give y'all a hint. This guy is a big rodent, and he uses his teeth. He files his teeth down by eating, chewing on trees, oh, and then yes. he uses those trees, and he makes a home out of it in a river. Is that a beaver? Yes, it is. I had a feeling. This is a beaver. It is the largest rodent that we have in North America. There are even there are even bigger rodents though, but for the most part, a rodent's gonna be a little guy. So your mom might take the clippers or nail file and get your nails shorter, but a, a beaver goes like that and just yeah. files away at their little teeth while they're uh, to get them shorter. Yeah, he's really good at multitasking. He he um, he grinds down his teeth and makes a home, hmm. and his home is called a beaver dam. Hmm. And um, it's really interesting because. Um, beavers are actually the second most um, influential um, in their ecosystem, first to humans. So humans, of course, we uh, have a lot of power and ability to uh, build things. So for example, um, we can build uh, actual human dams um, and those create electricity and stuff like that and that can actually affect the flow of the water uh, in the river because there's something they're blocking it. Um, but beavers are actually have the power to move the direction of a river too. So, so they build their dam, it stops up the water and the water changes somewhere else. So just like when we tear down trees to build a house and then that changes the environment around there. So the mm -hmm. beavers, every time they build a little dam, they're changing the water and they're changing all the land around it by, mm -hmm. by what they do there. Yeah, by getting rid of the trees. So these Very guys... Cool. Um, are basically nature's little construction workers. They're, <laughs> they're doing everything else for um, our little ecosystems that we have. Nice. All right. And what are these little rodents? Yeesh. Oh, and then here's the, here's the fur of the beaver. Oh, nice. I feel that. That's really nice. Oh, yes. Very nice. Yeah. So these guys are... Um, it feels more like a dog, kind of. Really dark brown. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, really dark brown. And if you can guess, uh, that's because of the mud in the mm, river uh, yeah so they're they're trying to blend into that and of course those beavers have that long tail right yes that's another adaptation they're using that really long flat rough tail to pat down the mud and make a oh. really good home for themselves nice okay these little rodents i don't love their their heads are too small they look like they might be like a rat or a mouse <laughs> are they that would be a good guess, but I will give out a few more hints and okay. we'll see, we'll see exactly what it is. So of course these guys have a little pinch nose. <laughs> and you know, they, they look a lot like a mini version of the, be of the beaver. So we can see their teeth. Mm -hmm. These guys are um, rogues, so they have round ears. And they're usually um, a nice um, 
brown gray color oh. and their tails are uh, nice and red. Their mm -hmm. tails are very, very fluffy. Yeah. So some rodents don't have any hair on their tails, but these guys lucked out and they have really fluffy tails mm -hmm. and you're going to see them around everywhere. They're running around. They're, they're digging up their uh, nuts to eat them because it's oh. springtime. Okay, I like it better now. And um, mm -hmm. they're running okay. around. Okay. The nuts, yeah. mm -hmm. Got a squirrel? Yes. Nice. Okay. Uh, Much better than a rat. A fox squirrel. And of course, we all know what those guys look like. But let me just show you an up close of the skull since it's really small. There's so a really cute. better picture. And those guys, of course, since they're rodents, they need to keep chewing and chewing. And so they're doing that by um, uh, making nests in uh, trees. And they're going to be chewing and opening up uh, nuts, walnuts, pecans, all sorts of things. These guys are also really uh, good engineers, too. Because you want to know what they do? What do they do? They sometimes forget where they bury their nuts. And then in the springtime... Trees start to grow. Little <laughs> baby trees. So they, these guys are planting entire forests. How funny. Just mm -hmm. to hide them. Yep. So are rodents herbivores? Yes. For the most part, um, rodents are herbivores um, since they're eating nuts and stuff that comes from a plant. That's what I was thinking. That they, I didn't really think about them mm -hmm. eating any sort of meat or anything. Um, I well, I will say that um, some rats or, and mice can be omnivores. Um, because they will ravage in the trash. Really, anything that ravages around in the trash is an omnivore. So they're, they're just in, not that picky, is mm -hmm. what we're saying. Yeah, they're, they're not, not that picky, picky eaters. Um, yeah. So, of course, there's a little bit of diversity in um, the, the rodent family as well on what they eat. But for the most part, a lot of them are going to be herbivores. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's, let's recap everything we talked about. So we've talked about mammals today. So remember, all the animals are classified into different groups, um, and mammals are the type that have fur, they have babies, they don't lay eggs, they lay babies, and uh, they drink their mom's milk, mm -hmm. which is like uh, humans yep. are mammals, and dogs and cats and, and lots of other things are mammals, but that's the big classifications are those three questions. Um, and so mammals can either be omnivores, which means they eat plants and meat, mm -hmm. right? Or carnivores, mm -hmm. which means they eat meat, just meat. Just meat. And then herbivores means that they eat plants, just plants. Yes. So one or the other. So probably everybody watching at home is an omnivore. Um, but if you're a vegetarian, then you would be a herbivore right because you would mm -hmm. just eat the plants um but but mammals other mammals are the same way that they they have their uh, animal or their food that they choose to eat and then we also talked about how mammals have adaptations so the adaptation is any sort of change in their body or their behavior that helps them better survive and adapt so that could be really sharp teeth because they need to get the meat it could be claws to help them climb a tree. Like which one, which one climbed the tree? The fox. The fox, so the fox. And the, and the squirrel. Right, but the fox is the one that's the only dog that can climb a tree and that's a special adaptation because of where it lives. Mm -hmm. It needs to be able to get away from predators. Or it could be the color of its fur, which uh, blends in with the environment that they're in. Or like the beaver tail that's flat to pat down the mud. So there's all sorts of different adaptations that mammals make so that they can survive uh, and thrive in the world. Um, but they're all still mammals and they all still have a lot in common. And we all still have a lot in common, right? Yeah. So just like how people are all different and we have different color hair and we're different heights uh, and we're different ages, even though we're all very different, we have a lot of things in common, just like all these mammals. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot of fun stuff that we covered. Uh, and we're so excited that Madison could do this for us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm so glad that I was able to teach you guys a little bit about mammals because they're my favorite. Absolutely. And so we, we've got some uh, stuff that you can download if you want to learn more about mammals. Um, if you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. Uh, just a reminder, this was not a live video, so we're not responding to you uh, during the video, but we will respond to your comments if you ask them um, and we will get you whatever answers and whatever more you want to know um, about.
about mammals. Um, and we would love to hear what you thought about it. And we look forward to seeing you guys at our next program and watching our next video. So we hope you have a good day. Uh, go learn some more about mammals. Go find your favorite mammal and tell them that you're, you're glad that they're a mammal and that they've adapted to survive. Yeah. Right? Thank you guys. <laughs> okay, have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye.